Welcome to The Dental Brief, the world's direct, right-to-the-point podcast produced to get you the information you need to learn and grow your practice. To learn more about our guests and find links to information discussed on our show, visit our website, dentalbrief.com. On to today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief's fastest dental podcast on the internet. Uh, We're excited to have a, a couple of experts um, on the show in the field of all things business, accounting, consulting. Um, I have with us um, Adam Reich and Ryan Hober, or Huber, I'm sorry, from Home Camp and Kruger and Co. Say hello. Good morning, everyone. This is Ryan Hober here. R- Ryan, I'm sorry, I think I hammered both of your names. Adam, how did I do in yours? Pretty bad? Uh, Adam Reich, uh, close enough, Patrick, uh, but uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah, uh, good morning to you. I appreciate you both. Uh, Having two of you here is uh, terrific. Um, Tell us a little bit about your agency, um, your firm, and what you do. Sure. Yeah, I can can take that one. Again, Ryan Haber here. Uh, From a a firm perspective, Han Camp Kruger, we are a top 100 CPA business consulting firm here in the U.S. We've been in business for 74 years. We've got clients in all 50 states, uh, that includes dental clients uh, nationwide and 40 plus different service offerings. So a little bit about the, the firm on a, on yeah. a high level. How, how did you both um, how did you both start working in, in dentistry and how, or how did your firm get into healthcare and dentistry? Sure. Yeah, I can. I'll, I'll, I'll start off, Adam, and then we'll you can, uh, you can go next if that's all right. But. My, my background, real quickly, I, I started off uh, public accounting with a top five firm here worldwide on the external audit tax consulting side of things. And then I did a, after a couple of promotions, took a, uh, a role with a Fortune 500 organization up in northern Wisconsin to get some industry experience. Did that for about five years and then came back home to public accounting. My uh, my wife uh, has been a dental hygienist for 20 years, so always have had a, a passion in the uh, in the dental field and the industry, and have been heavily involved with our, our nationwide uh, dental industry niche practice here at HK or on Camp Kruger for the last 10, 11 years. Yep. So I, I do know that, and I, I know that it's it's one of your areas of expertise. But working specifically in health healthcare and, and dental is so important. I think dentists working with firms that have that experience, I think, is critical because not all businesses are the same, right? I mean, not all not every industry is the same. Would you agree with that, Adam? Yeah. So uh, kind of my story and how I got into to dental is uh, you know uh, business consulting uh, advisory is very much relationship driven. So our our firm has always been connected to the dental community, and and as we got uh, a little further along, needing that expertise, um, you know, me personally, I started in uh, in our accounting department, did some time in our our audit department, uh, led our cost segregation division, uh, and we got to work with a number of dentists that way. And a number of years ago, my my brother was in dental school, getting ready to to graduate in a, a year or so, and said. Hey, you're going to help me figure all this stuff out, right? Like how to buy a practice and how to bill and all those other things. So um, really kind of opened my eyes even wider to needing that industry expertise. And so we jumped headfirst into that and uh, I haven't looked back been loving it ever since. So, um, yeah, I totally agree. Having somebody who knows the industry is is huge. huge. Yeah. So, you know, having a 10 years experience in the industry, it can be a lot of fun, but there's a lot of challenges that practices face. And, you know, let's just jump right into that. What are some of the the problems, the headaches, the nightmares, what, what kind of calls are you guys getting nowadays that dentists need help with? Yeah, so I mean, obviously the the big one that, uh, you know, we kind of hoped would be behind us, but it uh, doesn't seem like it's going anywhere anytime soon is, is COVID. Um, you know, how do you deal with that from a, a clinical perspective? What is that doing to, to the numbers? How does that uh, affect in case acceptance? How is that affecting the flow of people coming in? Um, and then you've got the, the financial side of that is the number of government programs that are out there that, you know, may have been enacted over a year ago, but they're still available and people are missing out on uh, free dollars and, and ways to help keep their practice afloat and maybe make up some of that margin from not being able to, to see patients as, as quickly and efficiently as possible. So we're still getting calls all the time on that, uh, maybe even more so reaching out to, to folks saying, hey, 
this employee retention credit is still available in 2021. And did you get that for 2020? Are you taking advantage of it? Um, you know, let's let's look at those sorts of things. Obviously, the PPP uh, round two forgiveness, folks starting to have used up those dollars. Uh, let's make sure that we get that forgiven and, and get that off the books. Um, and along kind of uh, the same lines as COVID, it's, it's led into a lot of transition, um, whether it's Dennis that, uh, you know, gets, got spooked by it and don't want to, you know, be back in the, the workplace and, and having to deal with it to um, other people who are maybe more aggressive and saying this is a, a buying opportunity to, to maybe pull together a couple of practices and get some synergies there. So we are seeing a, a huge amount of, of volume in the, the transition space and, and just either, like I said, helping to, to unload a practice or helping maybe to, to acquire. Um, so that's been a, a big uptick, and, and I do put a lot of that on, on COVID. Um, and along with that, you know, you had the administration change in Washington, D.C. Um, once that happens, there's always different tax philosophies um, that come into play. So um, we're certainly keeping an eye towards Washington. You're hearing, you know, a, a trillion dollar bill here, a three and a half trillion dollar bill there. Uh, at some point, they're going to have to pay for that, and uh, businesses that are, are making money, that are having a lot of cash available, such as the, the dental industry, are, are going to get dinged with that. Uh, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no debating that, that they're going to look to some of those folks, our doctors, to, to try and help carry that burden. So um, keeping an eye, towards, an, an eye and an ear towards Washington and, and what's coming out and how do we plan for that? Uh, how do we structure things? How can we mitigate? Um, you know, I understand people have to pay their fair share of taxes, and, and most of our clients say they don't mind paying their fair share, but uh, any more than that, they really don't get too excited about. So of course. Helping, them, helping them navigate that and then just the, the uncertainty of, of what is the future of dentistry going to look like and, and how can we maybe help hold their hand through, through the changes that are coming, um, whether it's technology, whether it's COVID, whether it's transition, whether it's taxes. So, um, you know, it seems like it's... Uh, a great industry. You get to, to perform dentistry, and, and most dentists would say, "Hey, I just want to. I just want to do my thing. I went to school, and now I just want to do that." But um, you know, you pile in all these other things on top of it, and it, it can be a headache, and it can be a burden on a lot of our of our doctors. Yeah. There's, so you know, you covered a, a, a couple of things there. I mean, these all seem uh, very easy to solve by a couple of quick Google searches, right? Uh, <laughs> obviously, being sarcastic, and 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 let me say, you know, I might. I want to back up just one second. One thing that, you know, all those things that you said are important, but one thing that I'm not hearing anybody talk about is the employee retention credit. I've, I'm on the internet and forums and Facebook groups and I'm, my ears to the ground and I'm paying attention to what dentists are saying and what they're talking about. I mean, it's, it's what it's part of what I do on a daily basis. I've never heard this mentioned, um, right? I, I've never heard one dentist ever mentioned and I've heard plenty about not being able to, to keep um, employees but I've never heard of anything. Touch on that for a little bit, the employee retention credit. Yeah, so the employee retention credit is is one of those things, like you said, if you do a Google search, you're, you're probably going to get lost before you get started. It, sure. uh, it was enacted last March and um, was part of the whole CARES Act and the package to try and stimulate the economy. Um, but they excluded it if you got the PPP then they excluded you from getting the employee retention credit. So they kind of kicked everybody out. Well, uh, following the path, then and you get into uh, December time frame, and, and they kind of changed their mind and said, hey, all right, we know everybody that got the PPP, but we're going to open this employee retention credit up even if you did get the PPP. So now that all those people were eligible as well, um, and a lot of people didn't track that and, and didn't understand that that, uh, that then came into be. So... Um, what it is, and, and then I guess the other complication is they changed the rules from 2020 uh, to 2021. So where we found all of our dentists qualifying for at least a portion of 2020 is that a mandatory shutdown was one of the, the hurdles that qualified you for these credits. So um, that was number one. Like I said, just about every dentist we've ever talked to had some sort of a mandatory shutdown. You weren't doing cleanings. You had to you know, flip the schedule. You could do the emergencies and those sorts of things. Sure. Um, so that was, that was one of the qualifying things. Um, the other thing that was a qualifier was if you had a 50% reduction in revenue from one quarter to the next in comparing 2019 to 2020. Again, that 50% drop, you qualify for the credits. 
Uh, fast forward to 2021, that number drops down to the threshold of only 20 percent. Um, so again, the, the change there and, and people just not understanding if they qualify or, or they don't think they qualify, but maybe they do. Um, and we're finding that even, you know, to be perfectly honest, even on the accounting side, there's a lot of, of firms that aren't on top of this and aren't aware of it. And, uh, you know, kind of going back to that industry expertise, we knew all of our dentists were going to qualify. So now it's on our radar because of the shutdown. Well, now we're also doing the calculations. Do they get the 50% in 2020? Are they getting the 20% in 2021? So it's front of mind, again, because of how connected we were to the industry and knowing that they were all going to qualify. But yeah, if if you've got dentists out there um, in, in your know, healthcare in general that had a mandatory shutdown, not a full shutdown, nobody was fully shut down. The emergency right. things were still allowed. But that big disruption in your business is basically a, a guaranteed almost to qualify for these employee retention credits. Yeah, you got to look into that for sure. And, and I think, you know, we're at the end of this program, we always ask about vetting um, an expert to help you. If, if your accounting firm um, hasn't brought this up or hasn't looked into this with you, I think it's certainly time for you to probably take a look into some others. Um, let's uh, let's jump into some actionable steps, you know, out of all these things that we've talked about today. What are what are three, four actionable steps that a dentist, a practice owner um, can take today to make a significant impact uh, in their business for the better. Brian, yeah. I'll let you jump on the beginning of that. Yeah, I, I would say, um, you know, getting a, a handle on your on your on your on your financials. I think a lot of the the dentists are great at what they do, as far as seeing seeing patients and. The day to day, but behind the scenes, the back office functions, I think a lot of them are hoping or placing reliance on their current service provider to kind of guide them through the, the financials because they don't have sure. that background or training. So I think from my standpoint, if you're not if you're a dentist and you're currently not working with a proactive service provider on the tax financial side that can help guide you, help define for you, you know, what are your key performance indicators and, and what things you should be concerned about or should not be concerned about things you're doing well, things you're not doing great. If you don't have somebody in your, in your, in your court doing that for you and you're not trained or don't have that experience, you need to do that very, very soon, especially in this current economic climate we're in. So what, what are a few two, three, four KPIs that a, a dentist should know um, and should understand. And if they don't, that means they don't have a handle. So in other words, I'm, what I'm trying to do is say, hey, what's the definition of have a handle on, on, on your finances? What, what are some things, what are questions that you ask a dentist? And if they don't, or if they're not able to answer them, that means you, have, you definitely don't have a handle on that. Yeah, so I'll jump in here, Patrick. I mean, we look at things like, you know, number of new clients, but also what, what are my day's receivables? How long is it taking me to collect on my receivables? We look at what is our percentage of, of case acceptance, you know, um, in, a, in a time where everybody's kind of trying to, to fight for some more revenue. A lot of times your biggest revenue increase is right there in your own practice and it's just increasing your case acceptance load. So sure. when you start getting into those sorts of things, that's really knowing your practice inside and out. Um, to piggyback a little bit on that with what Ryan was saying, you know, as far as working with a, an industry expert and those sorts of things, um, the office manager serves a role. Their role is to manage the office, to, to keep the schedule full, um, to, to help find dollars that way, you know, maybe cost cutting, those sorts of things. But you can't expect them to understand some of these complicated tax laws, these ERC credits. So um, even though you might be doing some things in-house, having a go-to um, that you can work with or somebody that's looking at your financials on a monthly basis that can say, hey, hold on, we need to stop here. Either we've got an issue here or we're not taking advantage of something over here um, is probably a better use of the dollars and, and letting that office manager really run the office and, and keep you efficient that way. Um, so it's, it's a combination of both the external, what's going on, and, and like I said, a lot of the, the internal financials and, and numbers that are going on there as well. So um, it's kind of a combination of, of things as far as knowing what your numbers are. Sure. And when you, when you first, uh, gentlemen, when you first talk to a dentist, if, if somebody calls your firm and they're interested um, or, or have questions about your services, what's that process look like? 
Yeah, so um, it, it's a vetting process both ways. We we want to work with clients who are looking for that that business expert that wants to be a partner that's going to be open to having conversations and, and talking about plans in the future and, and those sorts of things and not just, hey, drop off my, my shoebox of receipts and, and you can give me a tax return. Uh, on the other side of the coin, you know, we're, we're saying, hey, work with an expert. Well, well we would expect the dentist to, to kind of vet that as well. So what we will typically do is ask for, hey, give me your financials, uh, most recent financials. Give me your most recent tax returns. Let us take a, a look at it from a, a third party perspective and let's see, hey, is there a compliance issue? Hey, did you miss a planning issue? Hey, is there a chance where we can go back and maybe get you a refund if something got missed? And then let's 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 invest an hour uh, of time into each other and, and have this conversation of here's what we see uh, in in your data, in your numbers, your tax returns, and things. Um, let's have some questions. Let's talk about processes. Let's have you talk to us about uh, you know your concerns and you know a lot of it is. Hey, if I call you, are you going to answer and, and some of those sorts of things? So we really think in investing some time in each other up front, um, you know, it, it's a small price to pay in order to to vet some of these things and get to know each other a little bit um, and kind of understand, hey, this is this is kind of how we operate. This are the, these are the things we do, uh, the opportunities that we're looking for for you, uh, you as the, as the practice owner. Um, what is it that you need in a, in a provider and, and are we going to be a good fit? Yeah. Yeah. It makes total sense to me. And I'll, I'll say to it, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of let you take it from here. They, um, to wrap things up, you know, I see a lot of practices. Um, I've never seen somebody work with a rock solid accounting firm where it hasn't actually been a return on investment. And I know a lot of people look at it as an expense. All oh, it's just, you know, one more hand in the pot and what have you. And, and it is truly is it goes on the balance sheet as an expense, right? There's no doubt about that. However, a right firm can make a significant impact in retirement. It can make a right. Uh, it can make a significant impact on you know net profits year after year after year. What do you say to those that hey that, that you know are still reluctant? Hey, you know they're just going to take my money. What do you say? Yeah, that kind of goes back to the the vetting process we talked about in, in being a good fit. And in the way that we look at things is is different than just putting the the numbers on the form. We're looking at tax planning ideas. We're looking at financial planning ideas. We're looking at retirement planning ideas. We're looking at getting you as much PPP money, getting you as much ERC credit. So um, I, I really like it when I've got a call with a dentist and we can find a, enough savings uh, in their situation that we pay for ourselves. Um, sure. That's that's an easy conversation. But at the same time, even if, if that's not always the case, it's the discussion of Listen, you don't want to have to deal with the IRS. You don't want to miss out on on planning opportunities and ideas. Um, yeah, it's an expense, and I understand that, but you're going to get what you pay for in the long run. And as as you said, Patrick, if you've got somebody that knows what they're doing, they're, they're pretty much going to pay for themselves uh, multiple times over, is my opinion. Yeah, appreciate it. Hey, gentlemen, last question for you. If our, our, our listeners want to reach out to you, what's the best way to do so? Yeah, Ryan here again. Uh, the, the best way to reach out to us probably is via email. Um, if you're going direct to Adam or I, and you know, my email address, I think will be provided probably is in the contact information here, the podcast. But if, if not, it's R Haber, H A U B E R, at concamp.com. Uh, otherwise, they also can check out, we've got a couple different websites. Uh, we've got our, our, just overall Honkamp website, which is www.honkamp.com. And inside that website, you can just search on dental. We've got a whole uh, page dedicated to our, our dental industry niche, along with uh, a wide variety of information out there. And then in addition, we, we do have a dental transitions website. That is www.hkdental.com transitions.com for those dentists that are maybe looking to buy or sell a dental practice as well too. So a couple of different websites and Adam, you want to maybe share your contact info as well? Yeah, definitely. I would, I would uh, agree with Ryan. Uh, email usually works best. Um, when you send us an email, we'll send you a, a response back that says, Hey, here's maybe those three or four things that I had talked about tax returns, financials, et cetera, so that we can uh, do the review and then be ready for that, that hour of time that we would spend together. So my email address is a R E I S C H at Honkamp.com. 
Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on. I encourage our audience to reach out to you. Uh, Adam, Brian, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Did you know you can weigh in on today's topic on Facebook? Search The Dental Brief on Facebook or visit our website, dentalbrief.com, and just follow the link. We look forward to having you join us again on another episode of The Dental Brief.